you raced nine million in five days yeah so you must have really good like numbers yeah i do yeah, yeah. <laughs> so that's that's why i was able to do it yeah. right because so like, how much can these strippers actually make like wow uh, yeah. a good one can make five to ten thousand a week what oh yeah holy easy. they're making half a million a year yeah easy holy that's crazy yeah Welcome back to the show, guys. Digital Social Hour. Thanks for tuning in. I'm your host, Sean Kelly. Got with me an interesting guest for you guys today, Alan Chang. How you doing, buddy? Good, man. So you're the first one on coming from the strip, li- strip club life. And, yeah. And uh, can't wait to hear more about it. Yeah. Well, I started my career in Vegas in 2004, and I, I'm the owner of Peppermint Hippo in uh, Las Vegas right now. Mm-hmm. So we have 10, 10 clubs throughout the, the nation. Wow. So I started in 2018, and built it up from there to now Las Vegas is my uh, flagship. So you have 10 clubs in five years? Yeah. That's crazy. So that's two a year almost. Yeah, it started slow. So it was like one a year and then mm-hmm. all of a sudden it just it just ballooned. Like once yeah. we got, you know, Vegas and then I closed three more clubs after that. Wow. You know, two are in construction right now, so it's not fully up and running, but yeah. yeah. Don't you need a lot of capital to start each one though? I do. So originally I was... You know, when I left the Rhino back in 2015, mm-hmm. I was trying to open up a club in Vegas. And I couldn't get it done because it's just too much money, you right. know? So I was like, all right, I give up. And I had to go to uh, Toledo, Ohio, which is not <laughs> exactly the place I wanted to be at. Yeah. You know, I was looking in Cali. I was looking in, in, in Texas, Florida, places I wanted to live. Right. Finally, I gave up. I was like, all right, I'm going to go to this, <laughs> this, this place in Toledo, Ohio. And uh, I ended up going there and with me and three other guys and we put 100K in. Each, each or total? Yeah, each. Each. Yeah, I still had to finance 200 from the owner. Wow. And within a year, I was able to get the, it was starting to be profitable. And nice. Then, then I went from there and opened up another club and just kept going. You know? Nice. And then, but, you know, when I did capital raises, you know, the last one I did was over 9 million. I did that in five days. You raised 9 million in five days? Yeah. So you must have really good, like, numbers. Yeah, I do, yeah. <laughs> so that's, that's why I was able to do it, right? Because, yeah. like, my my dividends I was paying out, I was paying out uh, on my very first couple of clubs. There usually takes about a year, year and a half to start doing dividends. But once it starts, it really kicks in. So right. they're paying out some on my two earlier clubs were paying out over 100% ROI. A, a year? year? A year. Bro. Yeah. That's like a lifetime yeah. investment for most people. And then my 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 third and fourth club, they're paying about 40% right now. Holy crap. Yeah, and that's still really good. Yeah, and it's, it's going to go higher because it's like it takes a couple of years to get it going. Right. So when I looked at so when I looked at deals, I always looked at it as like, hey, can I do a hundred percent ROI on a club? Mm. Meaning like, hey, can I get these guys when they invest in? Can they make a hundred percent a year? If their answer is yes, and and I say I don't hit the mark, and we're doing forty, mm-hmm. no one cares. Yeah. So that was always my benchmark to, for it. Wow, that's crazy. Even forty. I mean, we're in a recession right now, so to get forty in any market is crazy. Yeah, it's insane. So that's so. But you know, I don't take over clubs that are like crushing it right, right. I, I i go after clubs that are either non-existing or 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 doing horrible and then i turn it around got it so yeah. you're kind of like a fix and flipper of the club scene correct yeah interesting so why do you think certain clubs struggle and others just well i think it's well on the smaller market scales because i come from a big market so i understand like hey you know i came, came from vegas right so that market is just like a different level so are they I, the biggest in the country yeah okay yeah Maybe Club Eleven now is probably right. the biggest, biggest, but they're like a, high, a big hybrid, right? Yeah. So, um, but yeah, when I did that, it was we we built it up, and the other clubs are having struggles because they don't change with the times. Mm-hmm. You got to change with the times, otherwise you're gonna be stuck. Right. And you say the times. Are you t- talking about like this <laughs> movement? So, <laughs> did take a hit on us, you know, especially when the pandemic hit, right? Yeah. Because everyone shut down, including us. So, the thing is, with <laughs> took a lot of the girls away, but. Now at this point is we don't have a problem really getting getting entertainers, mm. and I think in the beginning we did, but now it's like it got flooded. Right. So it's like anything else, any other space, right? When you get flooded, yeah, you're not gonna make as much money. Yeah, it got saturated. Every girl started doing it. <laughs> yeah, every every girl in the world is doing yeah. it. And if you don't have a big social media following, you don't really make a lot of money, and you literally got to do yeah to make money there. Yeah. So how much can these strippers actually make? Like. 
Shout out to today's sponsor, Gusto. Something always comes up when you're running a small business. Well, Gusto's payroll and HR services can make that a little easier for you guys. Gusto was designed for you, the small business owner. They take the pain out of running a business, automatically calculating paychecks, filing payroll taxes, setting up open enrollment, all that stuff you don't like to do, Gusto does it all. If you want even more, they do time tracking, they do health insurance, they do 401k, onboarding, commuter benefits, other letters. They also have access to HR letters. You get the idea. They got pretty much everything you can think of. With Gusto, you can focus on the joy of running your own business. Super easy to set up and get started. And if you're moving from another provider, they'll transfer all their data for you. No surprise, 94% of customers recommend Gusto. Yes, that's 94%. Want all this and more with no hidden fees? Try it out for three months for free at gusto.com slash social. That's gusto.com slash social. Wow. Uh, a good one can make five to 10,000 a week. What? Oh, yeah. Holy crap. Easy. They're making half a million a year? Yeah, easy. Holy crap. That's crazy. Yeah. If they do it right, you know what I mean? Like yeah. if they do it right and they're, they're straightforward and they're, they're good, they could crush it. Yeah. So what's the difference between a high-end stripper making 5, 10K a week versus a base one making 200 a week or whatever? No, they probably still, if they, if they listen, the, the thing is with dancers is like, they don't always come to work five yeah. days a week, right? But if they did, they would guarantee to make at least 60, 70 grand a year. Wow. Yeah, if they, I mean, if they just came to show up to work. Yeah, and that's without tips or with tips? That's with tips, yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. e easy, and then I mean, that's on a very low end. Your average girl would be making well over 100. I didn't know they were making the money like that. That's crazy. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Because the average person in America makes 50K a year. So they're making more than them. Oh, way more. Yeah. <laughs> well, you got to think, you know, they're doing like charging like 200 to 400 for a half hour. Right. I mean, that's pure profit. Yeah. The margins are, well, they have to kick back to the club though, right? They do pay a house fee. Yes. Okay. Yeah. How yep. does that work? It depends on the timing they come in. Like, so sometimes like what we do is we charge a flat rate mm -hmm. for the whole day. And then we give discounts of, hey, if you come in before, say, 5 or 6 or 7 o'clock p.m., mm. it's free. Oh, okay. And then it goes up 40, 50, or whatever it does. You know what Interesting. I mean? Interesting. Yeah. What are the peak hours? In, it's different everywhere, but okay. in Vegas, it's usually 11 o'clock till 11. 5 a.m. in the morning. That late? Oh, yeah, because everyone's coming from the clubs all drunk. And oh, they, they come, wow. They come to the, yeah. Oh, yeah, because the clubs close at 2, right? Well, the clubs keep it open, yeah, but there are a lot of people leaving here at two, yeah, and they're coming to the clubs afterwards. Wow, so you're up late. Oh yeah, and what what was that like transitioning into like a night owl, basically? Well, when I started this industry, I was 29. So when I did it, I I loved it at the beginning, right? Yeah. But now I work day daytime. I, I'm all, all office. Okay. But in in the whole meantime, before that, I was uh, I loved it. I mean, I was in night nighttime mm -hmm. club atmosphere. I was in Vegas. Yeah. You know, I grew up in Pennsylvania, so it was a world of world different. Yeah, that's way yeah. different. Yeah, it's it awesome. Yeah. You grew up on a farm? No, not on a farm, but it's you know, Langston, Pennsylvania it was Amish country. Right. Oh, so, surround Amish people. Yeah. Yeah, we had a farm, but yeah, I didn't yeah. grow up on the farm. That's where I got my dogs from. Amish oh, people. Yeah. They're good at that, man. Oh yeah, they're great. Yeah. yeah. Great it's a big thing. change for you. Mm -hmm. And the networking is also really good, right? It's yeah, it's some of the best. I mean, you you will meet millionaires and billionaires in there that yeah. have no chance of ever meeting. You yeah. Know, unless you're in like a, a a big networking space, right? And right. this goes for entertainers too. They have mm -hmm. the ability to meet high level people that they would never meet yeah. on a regular setting. Who are some people or celebrities or famous people you like, met? Like, uh, well, Mark Cuban. He came? Oh yeah, he's, yeah. <laughs> Isn't you know, he married? Well, this was years and years oh, okay. ago, yeah. Like, I you heard know, he was wild back in the day. Yeah, yeah, like, uh, you know, Tyson comes in still. Oh, Mike Tyson? Yeah. Yeah, he's single, right, so. Yeah, Floyd. Whatever. All those Floyd owns one, right? He owns one, yeah, but he still comes into other clubs. Not as much anymore, but yeah. but he definitely does, yeah. Nice. Did yeah. he approach you to partner on one? No. I feel like you would have done really well with him. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, his his club is just in uh it's an old Sherry's club. That was the yeah. very first club I ever op I I've ever worked at as a host. Oh, okay. So that was the, the Oh, so you used to work for him? No, not for him. He didn't own it back then. Oh, got it. Yeah. So he bought it? Yeah, he bought it later. Was on. it struggling? I think it was closed. Oh he bought it. Yeah. So I think he turned into it like more of a hip hop club. Yeah. So what were some of the struggles you had along the way? I know payment processing was an issue, right? Yeah, payment processing, we're considered like a high risk uh, business. Yeah. So our, we get hit with a higher rate of uh, a payment. So like, you know, usually credit cards are like two point some percent. Yeah. We're gonna hit that four or 5%.
yeah. that's because people get drunk and then dispute the charge, right? Yeah, I mean, the, the win, it's just, it's just a reason for them to add on that extra percentage. Because right. our win-loss rate is like 90-some percent. 99%. Oh, so you win most of them? Oh, yeah. Yeah. Wow. Because you have evidence of them obviously walking in on the cameras. Listen, we have cameras everywhere. In the yeah. Show. You probably have evidence of them signing the check, yes. too. <laughs> everything. Yeah, everything. So our, our win-loss rate is great. So that's not a real big issue anymore. It's just that the credit card still charges as a uh, high-risk business. Yeah. That makes sense. Mm -hmm. They do that with too, I think. Yeah, us and our banking is actually the hardest part. Oh, really? Yeah, because we can't get loans. Mm. So even in the in real estate, it's very hard to get loans. In real estate? Yeah. Oh, yeah. just to buy the actual place? Yeah. Any Anything to do, like, we, the banking won't provide us with any funding at all because we're considered, even though we're a legal business, we're considered a illicit business. Wow. That yeah. sucks. Yeah. Yeah, so, I was able to get loans easy. Yeah, we can't do it. Even if we show $25 million in revenue. Yeah. I, it's so hard to get a loan. We can't do That's it. That's so wild. Even personal loans? Personal loans are a little bit different. It's easier, right? Because okay. I, I show an income like, hey, this is my job. Yeah. But business loans, no. Wow. So you could literally have $20 million in revenue and they won't care? No, they won't. <laughs> and we do. We have $25 million in revenue. Last this, year? No. Last year we did 20. We're going to do about 25 this year. Holy crap. That's mm -hmm. insane. So it's scaling up. Yeah. Yeah. So what's the end goal? I want to get to 100 clubs and do um, probably go public or private. Wow. You think yeah. you can manage that many? Well, it's getting harder now. Yeah. So I got to build up a whole team for that, yeah, right? Yeah. So I need a bunch of, uh, you know, GMs, <laughs> GMs, you know what I mean? Probably 25 regionals, you know, a couple of VPs, yeah. a couple of presidents. Is yeah, there anyone so. that has taken something like this public or would you be the first? No, uh, RCI did. RCI? So, yeah. How many did they have? I think that when they went public, they were they're pretty small. They were like six or four, oh, okay. four or six. Yeah. So you're already ahead of them. Yeah. But they're, they're big now. Oh, they're, they're big now. Yeah. They have like, I think close to 60 clubs. Mm -hmm. so they're, they must be making like 100 mil a year almost. At least. That's crazy. Yeah. They have to be doing it. Yeah. 100%. Holy c These clubs are bringing in, you have 10 and you said you did 20 mil. So about two mil on average a year. Yeah. But the, but it's going to change drastically now with, with Vegas, right? Because when I was working at uh, Rhino and I know from a, like, my other sources here, you know, we're doing like 60, 70 million a year. What? For one club. Rhino does 60 mil a year? Yeah. Holy. I think at one point it's going in. Are you serious? Mm -hmm. Dude. One club. That's mind blowing. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I think, just... I think 11 is probably even higher than that right now in, in Miami. Yeah. This is a whole new world to me. I've never been to a strip club. Well, you got to come by. <laughs> Bring your whole crew. <laughs> My friends guys. go, but yeah. I didn't know they were caking like that. Oh, yeah, they crush it. So you're going to be, wow. Where's the one you're opening here at? Oh, so we had our one year was uh, in April. We did. So it, it, we opened last year, oh, last okay. April. And then uh, so we'll, our second year. Yeah. We'll come Where's it up? It's on Las Vegas Boulevard. It's the old OG building, which is the uh, Olympic Garden building. Yeah. So if you go past Stratosphere, it's right on the right there. Wow. Mm -hmm. Have you had any like weird, crazy incidents because people are drunk and doing dumb well, shit. yeah always <laughs> <laughs> not as much anymore because we're you know now that we're like you know we are we're corporate at this yeah. point right okay. but back in the day you know when before the clubs all went corporate it was you know wild times back wild then, west. You know, yeah you know uh frank Mir used to work with us oh yeah yeah he was a uh, head of security no yeah. joke right yeah, no <laughs> joke. yeah phil baroni he was uh he was working with i think he's in prison right now but yeah oh, He's, uh, he used to work with us too. So a lot of the UFC fighters uh, worked in our club. Wow, that's dope. Did you, do you have to have like crazy security every night? Well, we do. So we probably have, you know, our hosts are counted as security too, right? And yeah. our managers are all guys. So we probably have 20, 25 guys on, the, on staff all Yeah, at nighttime. Have you ever had to kick someone out? Yeah. Like not me personally, because I didn't <laughs> do it, but not any, or anymore. But yeah. yeah, we'd have to walk customers out. You know, we used to hang... Like this is back in the day, so not anymore. Yeah, right? yeah, yeah. But we used to handcuff like when guys wouldn't sign their tabs. We'd be like, "Hey, listen, you know, this is theft of service," and they wouldn't sign their tab. Yeah. So you would handcuff them? Oh, we'd handcuff Holy them to shit. the dumpsters in the back. No way. Oh yeah. So we'd be like, "Hey, listen," and we tell them, "Be like, hey, listen, man, we're gonna call police metro. It's a non-emergency. They're gonna take three hours to get here. Yeah. At least. So you know, you could either sign the tab, and you know, they can dispute or whatever they want. But you know, sometimes they're just drunk and they just just want to be, they just want to fight. Yeah. So they're like. You know, F you, blah, blah, blah. I'm like, okay. We handcuff them to the dump. We literally handcuff them to the dumpsters. Holy sh So they'd be standing back, <laughs> dude, and it stunk back there, right? They're handcuffed to the dumpster. They can't sit. They're sitting, standing there. And then we'd walk back about, and we'd leave them. Yeah. 
So we walked back about an hour or so. Hey, you race on the tab? <laughs> Give me the tab. Oh so it'd be like God. that, you know what I mean? Because the Metro's not coming. They're, 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 he'll be there three, four hours. Wow. Minimum. I didn't know there was like a separate line for non-emergencies like that. Yeah. And and this is Vegas, right? So like it's, you're going to wait forever. Yeah. Wow. Mm -hmm. How much marketing goes into these or do they kind of market themselves? No, we do. We do spend a lot of money on marketing. We're probably in just Vegas alone, we're probably doing about half a million a year just in our marketing spend. Like billboards, commercials. Billboards, promos, our social media. Yeah. You know, and social media is huge now, right? Mm -hmm. So, you know, we get our girls to post, we get our waitresses to post, and, nice. and that's how we kind of run it. You yeah. Know? And it's always like an event, you know, that we try to do. Yeah. It's cool that you're adapting with the change because some owners are old school and they don't care about social media. Majority of them are old school. Yeah. yeah. But you realize the importance of it. I mean, I see it changing the restaurant space right now. These food influencers are getting tens of millions of views and there's lines out the door at certain restaurants. Yeah, you have to. You have to, you have to adapt. Otherwise, you're going to get run over. Yeah. You know, and, and hopefully we're going to be the ones running people. <laughs> well, that's the plan. <laughs> so you're doing Vegas and then what are you doing next? What cities? Um, looking at Dallas, uh, possibly uh, Minneapolis. Mm. So now a lot of my places were small areas, right? In the beginning, I have a club in Reno, um, but... Little Rock, Arkansas, Faithful, Arkansas, mm -hmm. stuff like that. So, but now I'm trying to go into like more larger scale markets. Yeah. So, because it's just because you got bang. the capital now. Yeah, it's different now. And when you raised that nine million, was that just from private investors, friends? Yeah, it's all friends, friends and family, a couple wow. of private guys, and that's it. I knew, I knew all of them. Yeah, or so, friends of friends. That's it. Because a lot of people struggle to even raise six figures, but you were able to pull off almost eight figures. Listen, when I was doing my first club. I couldn't raise anything. <laughs> so it was like, I, I, so I had a couple of guys that was like, hey, listen, we'll go to Vegas. But they were so undercapitalized. I knew it was going to work. And then when I went to my, my third, first club, is me and three friends. Mm -hmm. So we each put 100K in. That's yeah. it. So we're like, hey, let's give this a shot. And, you know, two of them were like, hey, we're not moving to Ohio. So <laughs> you have fun. I was like, all right, I'll take it. What was that like living in Toledo for a few years? I only lived there one year. It was, it was not fun. I, I remember <laughs> I remember calling my friends and I'd be like, oh my God, dude, I can't believe I'm here. Because, you know, I came from Vegas. And yeah, I came yeah. from the number one club in the United States right. to Toledo, Ohio. <laughs> and I was like, every single day I'd be like, man, I feel like hanging myself, man. man. <laughs> this is horrible. You deserve some extra commission on that one or something. <laughs> yeah, it was crazy, yeah. It was, good, it was good times though, you know. Uh, do you still work with those same three guys you went on with on the first one? They're, they're investors with me now. Nice. Yeah. And one went broke off on his own, did his own club. Mm -hmm. But the other two are still, they're, they're with me right now. Nice. Mm -hmm. So was it like a bad split up or was it all? No, all it was up? cool. It was like, hey, we built it up to a certain level. I bought him out. Okay. You know what I mean? I bought his share out. He took that money and he opened up his own club. Yeah. You know, so he has one club right now and he's, he's building his own thing. Yeah. He's like, you know, I talked to him all the time. He's like, hey, man, I never want to get as big as you because I don't want to deal with the headaches. Mm. So if I get a couple clubs, I'm good. I feel that. Yeah, certain people have a limit where if they make like 500K a mil a year, they're good, you know? Yeah, and, and listen, there's something to be said about, you know, because I was making a lot of money and, and, you know, at four or five clubs. Mm -hmm. And then when I expanded, it's like, yes, my gross is a lot higher, but because you have all that overhead now, it just right. It compounds, right? Mm. And the headache just compounds. Yeah, that's the problem when you scale too quickly sometimes, right? The yeah. numbers are all over the place. And at the end of the day, when you look at them, you're like, wait, I didn't make as much as I thought. <laughs> yeah, you're like, oh, I made more. Only two clubs, yes. Yeah. Yeah, it happens. So I guess, uh, what else do you do outside of the strip club stuff? You got any other businesses or hobbies? No, man, it's just that. I have <laughs> just a, that? Yeah, yeah strip club. I mean, I, I, I travel once in a while and stuff like that and have fun. Uh, I used to have a lot more fun uh, before I started doing this, like, you know, getting to a larger scale. Yeah. But now it's just all strip club, you know. I have a, yeah, I have a lot of animals. I have pets and stuff like that. But besides that. pets you got? I got a, well, the, the one that everyone's interested in is always an African serval. The hell is that? It's like a, um, it's like a mini cheetah. Mini cheetah? You can have that? Yeah. In Vegas. Dude, you serious? You can have anything in Vegas. I got to see a photo. You got one? Yeah. Dude, I, I love cheetahs, so. It's like, it's uh, about 45 pounds. So it's like a, a dog that runs really fast, basically? <laughs> yeah, I think it's a, it's a second, one of the second, second or third fastest land map. Yeah. It's like in a quick sprint, you know what I mean? Or yeah. Kind of, yeah. What do you feed it? Uh, raw chicken necks. Raw chicken eggs, interesting. It eats the whole egg, or does it take it, the shell off? No, it eats everything—the bone, everything. Wow. Yeah, it's it's probably like, it's like literally this big and probably this high. Yeah, I'd love to see a photo. I'm into like exotic animals. I used to want a flying squirrel. Oh, dude, I, like I want to get a tiger and stuff like that later <laughs> on. But it, we'll we'll see when. Yeah. Uh, when I used that to happens. want a panda, but they're so expensive. 
The pandas? Yeah, they eat bamboo like nonstop. Can you even buy them? Not legally, no. <laughs> <laughs> but if I ever move to like some country one day. Yeah, I mean, Vegas, you could do a lot with. So here. Yo, that's sick. It kind of looks like a cat. It, dude, it's, it acts exactly like a house cat, man. Dude, how much was it? It's like 5K. Bro, are they friendly? Like, can you pet it and stuff? It's friendly to me. Uh, but not to others? Yeah. Like, it, you know, it'll sleep like, it literally sleeps between my legs. Wow. Yeah, but it's kind of defensive of you, probably. Yeah, a little bit. It's just, it's, just imagine a, a big house cat. Yeah. That's exactly what they act like. Wow. You know what I mean? But they, he knows his name, stuff like this, so you call him and he'll just run over to you. Dude, that's sick. I used to love cats. My girl's allergic, so she might be allergic to that. It's it's different. They're they're oh, uh, different. Yeah, their hair's definitely different. Wow. So do you like where you're at? Because you seem to just be working nonstop. Like, yeah, I do. Like I said, it will get easier because I'm getting ready to hire a CLO. Mm -hmm. I'm getting ready to hire. You know, I'll need a CFO soon. So hopefully they'll take some workload off me. Yeah. And then I could do a little bit of traveling. But I know myself because what happens is, is once I get once it starts getting a little bit boring, meaning that hey everything's going good, right? Mm -hmm. So you get a little bored. I, I always put myself right back in the heat. Man. Mm. So I'm like, all right, it's because once everything's going great, all right, what other clubs can we buy? So you don't like being content. You like being kind of uncomfortable. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I, I think that's the only way to grow. You yeah, have yeah. to be a little bit uncomfortable to grow. I agree, man. And most people think the opposite. Yeah, listen, you know, I don't even know if I'll ever fully retire because I think if you, when you fully retire, you're going to die. Right. So I think like, you know, hey, listen, once I get to a really comfortable state in finance and everything, mm -hmm. I will probably still do business. I'll just take a lesser role. Of yeah, it, yeah. You know I mean? They've done studies on that. Like people that retire, their brain just starts degrading immediately. Yeah, I see that all the time. You yeah. know what I mean? Like my parents are retired, you know, again, they're, my parents, I love them to death. Yeah. But yeah. Yeah, it's sad to see, honestly. I saw with my, my pops when he retired. Yeah, it goes fast too. Yeah. Like within a couple of years. It's Dude, like, yeah. One drops. year, his hair turned all gray, like within a year. Yeah, because they don't have anything to do. Yeah. So they're just sitting there. They're, nothing. they're just sitting there. Yeah, it's terrible. Yeah. Yeah, I don't believe in retirement. I believe in just doing something at least. Yeah, well, you're still young, so you got a long time to go. Yeah. <laughs> well, no, I mean, I've had friends my age that want to retire. Really? Because they make millions and they get bored, but it's mm -hmm. like, what are you going to do for 50 years? <laughs> yeah, what are you going to do? <laughs> just travel. I mean, traveling's fun, but you can only do it so much. You, listen, I, I travel for weeks at a time, but by two weeks, I mean, that's the most I'm ready to come home. Oh, yeah. So like- what are you going to do to travel like all nonstop? Yeah. yeah. And then you have to have someone to travel with, right? So For you have sure. to have at least your girl or your wife or you know, hopefully the best case is like a bunch of friends too. Yeah. That would be the case, but who knows if that's going to really happen, right? Yeah. Traveling's interesting because I find myself wanting to work near the end. Yeah. Same here. I get bored. <laughs> yeah. I get bored. No matter what happens, I get bored. And like most people are like traveling and they love it, but near the end, I'm like, nah, I just want to work again. Yeah. I love working. How did your parents view this? Because this was probably a foreign industry to them, right? Oh yeah, they thought I was. Uh, they thought I was doing something stupid, for sure. Your parents are Asian, obviously. <laughs> yeah. This is like totally different culture-wise. Yeah, yeah. So I was adopted too, but I do know oh, my, my real mom, and um, and she's really close with me. She lives in Vegas now. Nice. And uh, yeah, she was like <laughs> always like even when I started this, she was like. Uh, go back to college, you know, uh, you know, you could be an accountant. I was like, mom, I'm never going to do that again. <laughs> accountant. Yeah. Literally, the, you know, Asian parents <laughs> yeah, do the yeah. accountant, attorney, Classic, whatever, yeah. doctor. Yeah. They're like, hey, can you do this? I'm like, mom, I'm never doing that. I'm never <laughs> going to do this stuff again. But yeah, they were, they thought I was just doing it as a phase and yeah. to have fun. And I was in the beginning. It was like, Listen, I worked in construction and I was in construction sales and marketing. And when I went into the strip club, it was just literally just, hey, I just got to Vegas. I want to do some fun that wasn't like cooped up in an office. Yeah. And, and, I, di and I did it and I just found a career in it and it was nice. great. Yeah. So what was that turning point where they started to kind of believe in you more? Was it at first or did it take a no, while? No, it took a while. Yeah. Yeah. Cause like, you know, no one knows the money we make. Right. Cause like, you know, even like I said, when I was a host, uh, people would be like, you know, you guys could make minimum wage, blah, blah, blah. You know, yeah. at that time, you know, this is 15 years ago, we're making 120, 130. Hosts are making that much? Yeah. Just for like coordinating girls to tables and stuff? Yeah. Wow. I didn't know that was a six-figure job. Yeah, it is. Still even, is. Even at clubs too? No, nightclubs are a little bit different. Okay. So the high-level the high level guys make a lot. Right. But, you know, all those junior hosts and those mid-level hosts. see so many of them in Vegas. Yeah. They don't, they're, they're, I mean, they, they work in the death. They're probably working, I would say, 60 to 80 hours a week. Mm -hmm. And they probably make about 50. So what's the differential in the strip club? Why do those make more? Because we're we're more 
tip oriented with the, the entertainers and the customer base. You know what I mean? And we okay. deal with more with the club and there's less of us. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? If you go to like excess, how many junior hosts do you have? Right. How many promoters do you so have? So many. Yeah, yeah. They run through them like. Yeah, because they work them. They work them. Yeah. So it's, it's just like a, it's a different field. And one of our biggest things is like we have a hard time with management, man. Mm -hmm. And we're looking for more people all the time. Mm -hmm. And I would love to find young or even a little bit older people that that would willing to work and understand this because even in the restaurant field, right? Mm -hmm. Our managers make way more than most restaurant managers. In Vegas? Anywhere. Yeah. In the country. So we're trying to get more qualified people to come work with us mm -hmm. and to work for us and to build because they have because of our expansion rate. We could, you know, if they want to be a GM, run a club, they can. Mm. They just have to go through the process. Wow, you know, so clubs no, have GMs? Yeah. So I didn't know that. Yeah, so there's no cap. So yeah. they don't have a cap, right? Like normally if you go into a place, you're like, if you're a worker, you're like, well, I'm probably never going to make a management or I'll never make it to running the club or whatever. Right. But here we don't have a cap. So you want people to just be there for years and to work their way up? 100%. You promote that? It, listen, I'm looking for other people like me, how I was. Like I started as a host. No, mm -hmm. I ended up owning my own clubs and I would love to find more people like that. Mm. You know what I mean? Because yeah. it's like they are inventive and they could they could really do better for themselves. Yeah, that's cool. So what's mm -hmm. the hierarchy system? You start off as a host. What's the next level? Host and then management would be Management next. and then GM. Then GM. And then, then owner. regional. Oh, regional. Yeah, then probably VP, president. And oh, so you climbed all that? Well, I went from like, so there's other positions in there. So I went from host to director of business development. Mm-hmm. Then I worked for someone else at Rick's Chicago for a little bit, and I was the GM there, mm. and then owner. You know, nice. I mean? so then I built it up from that. So you had a lot of mentorship on the way up. Yeah, I did, and that probably helped you know how to run your own club. It one hundred percent helped me. Yeah. yeah, like you know, listen, my time at Rhino was invaluable. Like mm -hmm. I learned from the best because they were the number one in the industry, and it really helped me out, and it helped me form a structure of how a club should be ran. Now, did I use all of it? No, but I did learn a lot from. From there yeah that's cool because some people just jump in without any mentorship and they get yeah wrecked. that's hard <laughs> yeah that's really hard. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, you get crushed. <laughs> yeah. and, and we see it all the time because like what happens is, is sometimes you, you have like wealthy guys that are like hey they want to own a strip club yeah 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 i mean the only reason why they want to own a strip club is you know why the yeah. girls right and it's so <laughs> like they do that they don't realize hey it's actually work and you could dump millions of dollars into a club and mm. fail so after a little bit they're like oh this is horrible it'll sell yeah no, I literally knew guys that wanted to do that, and I just didn't think it was a good idea. No, they should at least partner up with someone that knows what they're doing. Yeah. I mean, otherwise, you're just like, it's being like me. Hey, I want to open a podcast. I have no idea what I'm doing. I'm just going to yeah. throw a million dollars into it. Yeah, yeah it's not going to sure. do well. So. so do you have like an affiliate program with the clubs for them to send you people? We do. Like with the hosts and stuff? We do. That's yeah. smart. Yeah, everyone does, but we do too, you know. So we, we set it up with like independent host, yeah. um, you know, club host. You know, even bartenders, cocktail waitresses, mm -hmm. you know, VIP services, yeah. send us business. Because yeah. that could be very lucrative for people that are in nightlife. 100%. Listen, like the 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 regular host out there or the junior host that's only making 50000 a year, you know, they send one group to us. The guy spends, you know, 10 k mm -hmm. You know, they make $2,000 right off the rip. Wow, 20%. Mm -hmm. That's pretty good. Yeah. I might have to start uh, sending people your yeah, way. Yeah, no problem, buddy. <laughs> Anytime. Dude, I know people hitting me up to go all the time. I'm literally just going to send them to you, Yeah, Colin. set it up, man. Say less. Well, uh, what's next for you, man? Uh, you know what? I don't, I'm just going to keep building clubs and then you know, probably do uh, private funding and then mm -hmm. put it all together. And You're going to raise more? Yeah, I'm going to raise How more. much more? Uh, the next raise I'm doing is a, it's actually a private fund. Mm -hmm. I'm probably going to do about uh, $40 million. That's a lot of money, man. It is, yeah. So like... It, you know, it's kind of crazy is like the, the higher level I get, the more people I meet yeah. at the next level, right? Right. And that's what we're trying to do. Like, and is that for equity or is that a, like a loan type structure? Um, loan and equity. Okay. It's going to be partial, you know. Nice. Like part for the real estate, part for the, the equity piece. Yeah. And then some of the note, obviously. So are you trying to retain as much ownership as possible? Because I know by the end, your goal is to go public. I think yeah. the average CEO owns 7% or something. Yeah, I'm trying to retain as much as possible. But, you know, obviously the more I raise... It gets diluted. Yeah. Um, you know, because of the structure of my my company right now and because of liquor license laws, it's you know, the investors are invested into a holding company and the holding company funds the Got funds it. the clubs. You know what I mean? So I actually own all the clubs. Mm. But but because of the liquor license laws, I have to do it that way. Oh, interesting. Because mm -hmm. each state is different, right? Each state's different, yeah. So like you can't serve it past certain times. 
Yeah, most days is like two o'clock. What what is it in Vegas? No, twenty four. We're twenty four hours. Oh, it's twenty four. Okay. Yeah. Well, I've, every other state's like two, right? Yeah. Two. I remember Jersey was super early when like I one thirty. Yeah, it's crazy. Yeah, one thirty. Everyone has to be out by two, probably. Yeah. yeah. And I think is isn't Utah really early? Oh, I don't even know. Yeah, because they're Mormon. Yeah. Well, you know, I, my one club's in uh, Arkansas. We have a five a.m. license there, so we mm. have a special license. But there's a county above us is a dry county. Wow. It actually benefits. Them. Yeah, so they all come. They, they all come down. Yeah. That's sick. Well, uh, dude, that was a blast. Where can people find out more about you? Hey, man, uh, just go check out our website. It's uh, Pepper Hippo, um, Las Vegas. And our Instagram handle is, uh, you know, PHLV. Love it, man. If you guys are looking for a good night, hit them up. Yep, anytime. <laughs> Thanks, All guys. Right. Thanks for watching. Peace. Yep, bye.